Sorry. No, no, it's not your fault. Um, uh, we, we started the afternoon session slightly late so that people had a chance to come back, so... Um, Yep, I should be set up. Um, and we're back again after the shortest break in the universe um, to see Kai Blinn talk about high availability login services with Samba 4 Active Directory. Shush! Hi, so because we seem to be in the Samba part of, oh, sorry guys. Um, we seem to be in the Samba part of uh, high availability here. So I'm going to talk about high availability for your login services. So I'm not talking about file services. So um, let me get into the Active Directory part a bit. So basically, I'm pretty sure Andrew Bartlett will think this is a slight uh, underrepresentation of what Active Directory actually is about. But <laughs> basically, basically, I mean, if you look at it, it's, it is a directory service, which is basically LDAP, but not quite. Um, it has some lock-in stuff that is basically Kerberos, but not quite. And um, the nice part about this for high availability, which is what I'm talking about, is that it supports multi-master master replication, just like LDAP usually does, but not quite because we're doing it completely differently. 
Yes. Uh, so let's move on to, to Samba 4, because uh, um, technically you can do all of this with the Windows Active Directory domain controller, but I mean, why bother? Um, you technically you could do this with a Samba 4 domain controller and a Windows domain controller, and then make sure that this keeps your system running even if one of the vendors decide to break you during an update, which might be a smart idea, but I still would prefer to run Samba 4 on two different Linux distros or something like that if you really want to make sure that no single update breaks your system. Um, yes, Samba 4 is an open source implementation of Active Directory. We're about to release Samba 4.0 really soon now, TM. <laughs> Honest. This joke has been working for the last five or six years. I mean, it's, it's going to keep working for a while. Um, Until you run out of magic sauce. Well, no, I, you know, I'm, I, I'm also a wine developer, and wine.1.0 <laughs> really being released, that worked for ages. Anyway, um, we're, we're seriously working on uh, Samba 4.0, but if you're just interested in the Active Directory parts, People have been running that in production for years. That is very, very stable. The only thing that stops us from actually releasing 4.0 is that some people seem to ex expect that Samba also does some other things like file serving and print serving and stuff like that. And for some reason, we haven't been working on that too much for Samba 4 because we were looking at Active Directory and printing is a bit boring. So, and we have a perfectly usable implementation of a print server in Samba 3. So, basically all the holdup we have with Samba 4 is uh, more or less figuring out how to make people happy who actually also want all this printing and file serving stuff. Uh, I'm pretty sure that Andrew Bartlett and, and Trish are going to talk about a bit of that in their talk uh, in the uh, sysadmin miniconf. Uh, in an hour or something like that? Yeah. So you might want to go over to see that talk if you're interested in when we're actually going to get out for, for the dough. Now, um, again, just because we had this right before, this is not about clustering the file system or having a high speed uh, file serving or anything like this. Um, it does help if you have a clustered file system because there's one part uh, in there that you might want to cluster. I'll get to that a bit later. Um, this is about login. So this is about the directory part. So all we require for Active Directory high availability is actually just to have the multi-master uh, replication working. So this is also an active-active configuration there. And the nice part is that it can actually have multiple domain controllers running that just spread the workload across the many domain controllers if you have a lot of clients logging on. Obviously, the system also works if you have different sites and you want people to go to the uh, faster domain controller usually, but you can still fail over to another site if your local domain controller dies. Uh, this is what it was designed for and this is what we're looking at here. Now, the interesting part, how does it work? Obviously, you need multiple domain controllers. I'm guessing that's not surprising to anyone here because usually for high availability, you need more than one thing. All the domain controllers do have a full copy of the whole directory. So that's basically it. I mean, there's a lot of things going on under the hood, which is the replication. But that goes on all the time anyway. The tricky part here, and I'm not going to go into details there because I have to admit I frankly don't know all the details, this is incredibly complicated, is what happens if one domain controller is down and the other domain controller does something to the user and then the domain controller comes back well, this is still easy, but if you have a split brain situation where the network link between the two domain controllers goes down and the user is deleted on one domain controller and changes the password on the other domain controller. So you have to have a 
pieces of logic in there that figure out what the heck is going on and how to fix that. But as a user for this, you don't have to care. I mean, if it doesn't work, file a bug report, of course. That's one of the advantages of actually running some before. You get to file a bug report. Um, unless bugzilla.microsoft.com is up already. I haven't seen that yet. Um, but so all you need to do is to just start up. Actually, do I have a slide? For that? No. Um, all you need to do is to start up a domain controller, number one, join domain controller number two to it, and it works magically. I'm, I'm co completely amazed by that. I've set this up a couple of times. I've set this up on, so Ronnie, Ronnie always is talking about these big systems with thousands of nodes and hundreds of thousands of disks, and I mean, he's working at this company that has these three blue letters and they always think big. And I'm a hobbyist, so I don't have the room for all of this. So I tend to run this on small embedded systems. I, I don't have one with me right now, but um, I tend to run this on beagle boards and other small devices. And it's very nice to be able to spread those all over the house and it doesn't really matter if at some point you decide, okay, uh, I need to vacuum this room, so let's unplug the domain controller and just go on vacuuming. Uh, and the fun part about this is really, and this is what I want to get across, it's really, really easy to get all these failover capabilities by just running this stuff because somebody else is taking care of it. The only thing that is the catch in there is that currently, if you want to do some more fancy things with group policies or some other things that, that require data in the sysvol folder, so if you care about this, you probably know about this because this is... Windows administration, you have to figure out how to replicate that one across. So this is something that we still have to require a cluster file system for. Um, personally, I've been playing with the, the Ceph file system for it, and I think that works okay. I know that the uh, deployments we have out there tend to just not bother with a cluster file system but just run rsync and something that notifies them if a file changes, which is completely sufficient because unless somebody is just in the process of logging on while there is an outage, they're never going to notice that the files are not in sync for a second or something. So for login services, running rsync regularly is completely sufficient, but this is the one thing you have to keep in mind. Um, given that uh, I haven't gotten any too harsh feedback from Andrew Bartlett yet, I didn't actually miss anything that will nip you in the butt there. So um, all I can say is uh, if you care about having multiple uh, lock-on servers, uh, spread the load and uh, give you the opportunity to survive one of the boxes dying, and you have a mixed environment where you have Windows clients, uh, try to use this. I run this at home in an all Linux setup and it still works great for me um, because the basic system is nice. A lot of people are using Kerberos and LDAP anyway. And um, if somebody else takes care of the magic sauce part, whatever. Um, yes, so I'm Happy to take any questions on this because I didn't put that much information on the slides, obviously. How do you configure it? How do you go about configuring it? Um, for the complete setup? Yeah. Okay, so this basically is all on the on the Samba wiki, but let I can actually how much time do we have? Um, how much time do you need? Well, I. What mostly what sort okay. of tools are you looking at? Uh, okay, so so basically, you, you just use the stuff that ships with uh, Samba. Okay. So basically, you need to provision the first domain controller. There's a provision script that Samba four ships. Um, you need to join the second domain controller. There's a Samba tool tool that Samba ships. It's not the greatest name, but the name we usually used was already taken. Um, yeah, point taken. Uh, anyway, um, 
So there's a Samba tool command that you use for joining and for a lot of other administration tasks. And that's basically it. I mean, the, the moment your second domain controller is joined to the first domain controller, the replication will kick off. Magic. Well, there's a component in Active Directory, the consistency checker that figures out that it has to do replication. And I think that starts per default after, I don't know, 60 seconds or something like this. Um, but, I mean, you don't have to configure anything. It, it, it might help if you just restart the other domain controller because then the consistency checker kicks off straight away. But um, if you're not in a hurry, so I, I usually only do that if I give a demo of the replication and I want to have things going on right away instead of people having to wait for 60 seconds and you're sitting there, hey, it's going to happen, promise. Yep. One more. Uh, what, about all, what about all the FISMO role stuff? Is, that, is, this, um, is there any of that stuff sort of lurking in the background that we've got to look out for? Um, what? Um, Microsoft, in AD, there's this flexible single master operations roles, you know, things like the RID master, the PDC emulator, all this kind of rubbish, which, in theory, if you take a box away that holds that role, you've got to either transfer it back or any of those sorts of... Is there any of that sort of gotcha stuff we've got to look out for? Well, I mean, we support the same system that Active Directory has. So, I mean, obviously, obviously, if you want to completely retire one of the systems, you have to move the role somewhere else. But, um, I mean, this, this doesn't impact your running operations. So, um, it's just, I mean, it just works the same way the Windows system does. You can even, if you, if, if you prefer to have a graphic interface, you can even use the Windows tools to administer it. Um, whoever needs that. Okay, um, I'm going to hand over to Ronnie again to talk about Darth Vader. So, um, thank you, Kai.